Okay, so far we have defined alphabets, strings, some string operations, and then we have defined formally a language. We have given some examples of language also. So, next we will discuss some properties of languages. Some of the properties we have already discussed. For example, the usual set theoretic properties with respect to union, intersection, complement, difference, etcetera, hold even in the context of languages. So, we are interested in some other properties with respect to the newly introduced operations concatenation, clean closure, and positive closure. We find that concatenation of language is associative. We have already shown it, that means if L1, L2 and L3 are languages, then L1 concatenation L2 L3 is equivalent to L1 concatenation L2 and concatenation with L3. We have already shown it. Now, we know that concatenation of strings is not commutative in general. That is why concatenation of languages is also not commutative. That means, for two languages L1 and L2, we cannot say that L1 concatenation L2 is equal to L2 concatenation L1. They are not identical. Because in general, we know that if x and y are two strings, then x concatenation y is not identical to y concatenation x. They are not identical. And hence, L1 concatenation L2 is not equivalent to L1 L2 concatenation L1. Then, it is very easy to see that if L is any language, then if it is concatenated with the language containing singleton epsilon from both sides, left side and right side, then it is equal to L, because every string when concatenated with epsilon from left or right, gives the string itself. That is, if x is a string, then epsilon x equal to x epsilon is equal to x. Therefore, every string, if L is a language, every string in the language, whatever it may be. So, if you concatenate with epsilon from both sides, it will give the string itself. Therefore, the language is not going to be changed. Hence, we get L epsilon equal to epsilon L equal to L. Then, if we concatenate a language with the empty set phi from both sides, L phi or phi L, it is going to give phi. So, you can prove it. Suppose that L phi is not equal to phi, then there must be a string which will belong to L phi. Therefore, we can write x as x 1, x 2 for some strings x 1 belonging to L and x 2 belonging to phi. This is the definition of your concatenation. But phi being the empty set, there cannot be any string that belongs to phi. So, therefore, our original assumption that x belongs to L phi must be wrong. So, therefore, L phi must be empty. Similarly, you can show that x also does not belong to, there cannot be any string x belong to phi L. And hence the result L phi equal to phi L equal to phi, it must be an empty set. Let us see some distributive properties. For example, we can show that L 1 concatenation with L 2 union L 3 is equal to L 1 L 2 union L 1 L 3. That means, concatenation distributes over 
union. Similarly, L1 union L2 concatenation L3 is equal to L1 L3 union L2 L3. Let us give a proof of the second one. Proof of the first one is exactly similar to the second one. Suppose, so, so what I am we are going to show is that L1 union L2 concatenation L3 equal to L1 L3 union L2 L3. Now, suppose string x belongs to L1 union L2 L3. So, in such a case, this implies that we can write x as x 1 x 2 for some x 1 belonging to l 1 l 2 l 1 union l 2 and some x 2 belonging to l 3. This implies x equal to x 1 x 2 for some x 1 belonging to l 1 or x 1 belonging to l 2 since x 1 belongs to l 1 or l 2 and for some x 2 belong to l 3. Now, this implies x equal to x 1 x 2 for some x 1 belonging to l 1 and x 2 belong to l 3 or x 1 belong to l 2 and x 2 belong to l 3. Now, from this according to the definition you can say that x equal to or x belongs to l 1 l 1 L 3 or x belongs to L 2 L 3. So, this implies that x belongs to L 1 L 3 union L 2 L 3. So, this one way is quite clear. Now, let us show the other part the converse part. Suppose, x belongs to L 1 L 3 union L 2 L 3. Now, this implies x belongs to. So, this implies x belongs to L 1 L 3 or x belongs to L 2 L 3. That means, we can write x as some x 3 x 4 such that x 3 belongs to L 1 or x 3 belongs to L 1 or x 3 belongs to L 2 and x 4 belongs to L 3. So, according to the definition we can write it like this. Therefore, we can write that x belongs to since x 3 belongs to L 1 or x 3 belongs to L 2 and x 4 belongs to L 3. Therefore, we can say that x belongs to L 1 union L 2 and concatenation with L 3. Hence, L 1 union L 2 from these two we can say that L 1 L 2 L 3 equal to L 1 L 3 union L 2 L 3. So, hence the proof. Let us see some more properties. So, all these properties are numbered. So, there are six properties in the sequence. 
So, if L 1 is subset of L 2 and L 3 is a subset of L 4, then L 1 concatenation L 3 is a subset of L 2 L 4. Is easy to prove. Similarly, the other few results are also easy to prove. Say, property 7 is phi star is singleton epsilon. The clean closure of singleton epsilon is equal to singleton epsilon and if epsilon belongs to L, then L star equal to L plus with a positive closure. That means, clean closure equal to positive closure if epsilon belongs to L. So, next property is L star L equal to L L star equal to L plus. We will we'll just provide a proof of this. We are going to give a proof of L L star equal to L star L equal to L star L plus. Suppose, x belongs to L star L, then we can write x as sum y z. We can write that x equal to y z for sum y belong to L star and z belong to L. But since y belongs to L star, this implies that this y can be written as y 1, y 2 to some y n with y i belonging to L. So, this for all i, we can write that y as y 1, y 2 up to y n for some y i belong to L. Therefore, x can be written as y z which is equal to y 1, y 2 up to y n concatenation with z which is nothing but y 1 then y 2 concatenation with y n and z, but this belongs to L L star according to definition. The converse is exactly similar that means, L star L equal to L L star. Further, when x belongs to L star L as above, we have x equal to y 1, y 2 up to y 1 z is clearly in L plus. So, this belongs to in L plus. On the other hand, x belongs to L plus implies that x equal to x 1, x 2 up to m up to x m with m greater than equal to 1. So, this is a definition of positive closure and here every x i belongs to L for all i. Now, let us write x s as x 1, x 2 up to say x m minus 1 so that we can write x as x this x m. So, this x we can write as x this m. Here note that x this belongs to L star by definition particularly when m equal to 1. If m equal to 1 then x this equal to epsilon because whenever m equal to 1 it goes from <coughs> there is no string. So, it is the epsilon thus x belongs to L star L. Therefore, L plus is equal to L star L. So, this is the proof for the property. Now, let us see L star whole star equal to L star. So, we can use a similar concepts to prove this property and some other similar properties. For example, L star L star equal to L star L 1 L 2 star concatenation with L 1 is equal to L 1 concatenation with L 2 L 1 star. Let us give a proof for this property. 
So, we want to prove that L 1 L 2 whole star L 1 equal to L 1 L 2 L 1 whole star. First, let a string x belongs to L 1 L 2 star L 1. Then, we can write x as concatenation of two strings y z, where y belongs to or you can say that y, where y can be written as y 1, y 2, or to say some y n. This belongs to L 1, L 2 star and z belongs to L 1. Now, in this case where y equal to y 1, y 2, y n which belongs to L 1, L 2 star every y i belong to L 1, L 2 is a concatenation of a string from L 1 and another string from L 2. Now, each y i as you said can be written in the form u i some string from L 1 and v i some string for v 2 uh, um, some, some string from L 2 that means u i belongs to L 1 and uh, v i belongs to L 2. Now, you know that the string v i u i plus 1 belongs to L 2 L 1. So, it is quite clear that u belongs u i belongs to L 1 and v i belongs to L 2. Therefore, v i and u i plus 1 must belong to L 2 L 1. Now, we can write x as y z which is equal to y 1 y 2 to y n z which is nothing but u 1 v 1 because y 1 can be written as u 1 v 1 y 2 can be written as u 2 v 2 and so on up to u n v n then z. Now, this can be written as e 1 since it avoids concatenation avoids associative Betty law concatenation of strings. So, e 1 v 1 u 2 v 2 u 3 and so on up to v n. So, u 1 v 1 u 2 v 2 u 3 u n v n z. Now, v 1 u 2 v 2 u 3 this all belongs to L 2 L 1 eventually the v n z belongs to L 2 L 1 since z belongs to L 1 and v n belongs to L 2. So, therefore, and again u 1 belongs to L 1. So, therefore, this belongs to L 1 concatenation L 2 L 1 star because there is a concatenation from a string from uh, concatenation of strings from L 2 L 1. Therefore, we starting from x belongs to L 1 L 2 star L 1, we have found that x belongs to L 1 L 2 L 1 star. Similarly, we can show the converse that means, if x belongs to L 1 concatenation L 2 L 1 star, it will belong to L 1 L 2 star concatenation L 1. Therefore, the property L 1 L 2 star concatenation with L 1 is equivalent to L 1 L 2 L 1 
whole star holds good. Let us see some more properties. So, L1 union L2 star equal to L1 star L2 star whole star. This proof for this can be taken as an exercise. So, so far we have provided many properties, so up to 14 properties of languages. Similarly, one can produce many other properties using the various operations. Now, we will see how languages can be represented using finite information, that means finite representation of languages. We are mainly interested in a finite representation of a language. If a person is proficient in a particular language, it does not mean that he should produce all the sentences of the language. Basically, what we expect is that using a finite amount of information, one should be able to validate or construct different strings in the language. That means, by giving a finite amount of information, all the strings of a language shall be enumerated or validated. validated. For example, if you see the case of a compiler, the compiler can validate any program which is nothing but a string from the programming language using only a finitely many instructions incorporated in it. So, let us have a look at the languages for which finite representation is possible. Given an alphabet sigma, the languages with single string x and phi can have finite representation. For example, suppose for a language containing a single string x, so x is a finite representation and for the empty set, so empty set itself is a finite representation. And any finite language can also be given a finite representation simply by enumerating all the strings in it. So, those are the finite representations for the different languages. Therefore, the giving finite representation for infinite language is a non trivial problem. If the language is finite, we can always enumerate the strings and which will be a finite representation for the language. So, let us see how to give a finite representation for an in infinite language. So, in this context, the operations on languages may be helpful. We will see that various operations that we have discussed so far may be used to give this kind of representation. For example, using clean star operation, we can have finite representation for some infinite languages. For example, you consider the language say the language L which is the empty string epsilon, then suppose A B a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b a b and so on. That means, a repetition of strings we are concatenating a b with a b finitely many times. Now, we can find this language or this language can be constructed as a clean closure of the language say a b. That means, if we consider language a b and take the clean closure of it, we get this language l. Suppose, this l 1, we say that we see that l 1 star is exactly l. That means, this infinite language can be represented as a clean closure of this language l 1. Now, if we have this, if we represent this language as simply a b, then clean closure of this is nothing but the language l. So, that is how we represent an infinite language using finite using finite, finite information. Now, to give finite representation for languages, one may first look at the indivisible languages, namely the phi singleton epsilon and a, because we cannot divide those languages further, these are the basis elements. 
the singleton A for every A belong to sigma. These are all basis elements. Suppose want to construct the language containing the singleton x for some string x belong to sigma star. We can use the operation concatenation over the basis elements. Just take the example, suppose you have x equal to a b a that means the language a b a containing the string only a b a. So, this is the language L. So, what you can do is that we can consider the language containing singleton a which is a basis element then singleton b then we concatenate these two languages a and b we get a language containing only the, the only string a b then again concatenate with a so this will give the language containing the single string a b a so therefore this language can be constructed by taking concatenation of three languages which are the basis elements any finite language over sigma say x1 x2 up to x and where x its x i is a string over sigma star can be obtained by considering the union of this singleton elements x1 union x2 and so on that means, you can consider the operations clean closure, concatenation and union to apply on the basis elements to construct any kind of languages. Now, we look at the aspects of considering operations of our basis elements to represent a language. This is one of the aspects, but there are many other aspects to give final representation we will consider those aspects later on. Now, the class of languages that we get by applying union, concatenation and clean, to clean closure for finitely many times on the basis elements is known as regular languages. The corresponding finite representation are known as regular expressions. Now, let us define regular expressions over an alphabet sigma recursively as follows. We consider phi, epsilon and a for every a belong to sigma to be regular expressions representing the languages phi, the singleton epsilon and a respectively. That means, if we have phi we say that it is a regular expression and this represents the language phi. If we have the regular expression sigma epsilon, then this represents the language containing the singleton epsilon and for every element a, a belonging to sigma, for any element a belonging to sigma, a is a regular expression and it denotes or represents the language containing a single string of length 1 which is a itself. So, this is the basis case for the definition of regular expressions. Now, if r and s are regular expressions representing the languages capital R and capital S respectively, then so are the following r plus s representing the language R union S. Then R concatenation S or simply R S represent the language R concatenation S and R star represent the language capital R star. In a regular expression, we keep a minimum number of parentheses which are required to avoid ambiguity in expressions. For example, if R plus S t is a regular expression, then actually this represents the language R union S 
concatenation or R union as concatenation T. So, in this case we have some precedence rule normally clean closure has more precedence highest precedence then we have the precedence for concatenation and then for union. Therefore, in this case so this language can be written by the regular expression R plus S T because in this case the concatenation has highest precedence and then we have the precedence for union. And if R is a regular expression then the language written by R is denoted by L R. So, if phi is a regular expression then we write that L phi the language dependent by phi is phi. Similarly, epsilon is a regular expression L of epsilon is the singleton epsilon. Similarly, L of A is A itself. Similarly, if R is a regular expression the corresponding regular expression L R may be some set capital R and so on. And the language L is said to be regular if there is a regular expression R such that L equal to L R, because we get the regular expression by applying finitely many operations from union, concatenation, and clean closure over the basis elements, and that is how we defined a regular language. So, a regular language over an alphabet sigma is the one that can be obtained from the empty set singleton epsilon and a for singleton a for every a belonging to sigma by finitely many applications of union, concatenation and clean closure. And the smallest class of languages over an alphabet sigma which contains phi singleton epsilon singleton a and is closed with respect to union, concatenation and clean, clo clean closure is a class of all regular languages over sigma. So, this can be seen from the definition. Now, let us give some examples of regular expressions and how can we construct regular expressions. So, already we have seen that the language phi singleton epsilon and singleton a for every abelian to sigma they are all finite sets and are regular. Consider a to the n for n greater than equal to 0. So, this set this set is regular as it can be written by the regular expression a star because So, A star basically it represents applying a clean closure to the language A. So, if we apply this clean closure to this A, the language containing a singleton A, then we get epsilon A, A A, A A A and so on. So, this is nothing but A to the n n greater than or equal to 0. When equal to 0, it will get epsilon. When n equal to 1, we get a. When n equal to 2, we get to a a and so on. So, therefore, a to the n can be written by using a star and hence this set is a regular set. Similarly, sigma star the set of all strings over an alphabet sigma is regular. For instance, if sigma is the set containing a 1, a 2 to a n, then sigma star can be written as a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 plus a n whole star. For example, if sigma equal to say a b, then sigma star equal to a or b whole star. So, you can represent it like this therefore, sigma star is a regular set. Let us consider the language the set of all strings over a b which contain a b as a substring. I can show that this set is a regular set 
for instance we can write this set as all the strings x belong to a b star such that a b is a substring of x and then this can be written as y a b z for some y z belonging to sigma star. So, say here y and z may be any string from a b. So, any string from a b can be written as a b whole star and this is also a b whole star. So, we can write this as a concatenation of three languages is a b a b star and a b star. Now, this can be written as a plus b whole star a b a plus b star. So, this is a regular expression for the given for a given language and hence this set is regular. Just consider language over 0 1 that contains 0 1 or 1 0 as substring. This can also be shown to be regular because you can write it as the set of all string x such that 0 1 is substring of x union all string over x such that 1 0 is substring of x. Now, this can be written as some y 0 1 z for some y z belong to sigma star union u 1 0 v for some u v belong to sigma star. This is nothing but sigma star 0 1 sigma star because y z may be anything from sigma star union sigma star 1 0 sigma star because u v may be anything from sigma star. Therefore, this is a regulation because sigma star 0 1 and 1 0 are regular and we have expressed this language L using operations concatenation clean closure concatenation and union over the regular sets sigma star 0 1 and 1 0. Therefore, this L must be a regular set. So, in fact, we can write it as 0 plus 1 star which is sigma star 0 1 0 plus 1 star plus which means union 0 plus 1 star 1 0 0 plus 1 star. So, this is a regular expression representing the given language L. Similarly, the set of all strings over a b which do not contain a b as a substring one can easily see that this can be written as b to the m a to the m for some m n greater than equal to 0 because a b cannot occur as substring. Therefore, if any b occurs it must precede any occurrence of b's. Therefore, this can be written as a regular expression which is nothing which is b star a star. So, therefore, this language the set of all strings over a b which do not contain a b substring can be written by the regular expression b star a star and hence this is a regular language. Similarly, we can construct regular expressions for many other languages. For example, just consider the alphabet 0 1 the set of all strings over this alphabet where number of say ones is at least 2 that means there are at least 2 occurrence of 1 in every string in the language let us define a language like this the set of all strings containing O over 0 1 where the numbers of 1 is at least 1. So, since at, at least 2. So, since 1 must occur at least 2 times, but before that there may be any string over 0 1 depend by x before the first occurrence of 1 1 after that also there may be any string over 0 1 which depends as y. y then the second one and after the second one again we have string over 0 1 which contain any numbers of zeros and ones. 
So, therefore, a typical string in the language can be written by x 1 y 1 z and here x y z may be any string over 0 1. Therefore, the corresponding regular expression will be 0 plus 1 star which is basically x then 1 again 0 plus 1 star again 1 this 0 plus 1 star represents this y and finally, for z again 0 plus 1 star. So, this one and this one represents that at least two ones will be there in any string and other than these two there may be any strings over 0 1 in any other places. So, there is a regular expression for the given language L. Similarly, if we define a language over the same alphabet suppose set of all strings over 0 1 having at most two occurrences of 1. So, this one was for at least two occurrence of ones, at least two occurrence, but not a for the language where we have say at most two occurrence of ones. In such a case, there can be at most two occurrences of ones. So, therefore, before this one there may be any string of over zeros and ones. Uh, so, sorry, uh, any string of zeros, but there cannot be any one. After this, again, we may have any strings of zeros, and then we can have it is again one more one, and after that also we can have any occurrence of zeros, strings of zeros. So there will be two occurrence of ones. Th this is the string for exactly two occurrence of ones. The set of all strings of R 0 1 which have exactly two occurrence of ones. So, if, if, we, if we should have at most two occurrence of ones, then we should incorporate this case where the strings of the form where there is at least at most one one zero star zero star and only strings of zeros. So, this will cover the case where there is no ones, this regular action will cover the case where there is only one one and this will cover the case where there is at most two ones. So, this will be the union of all these three. Hence, since we can express it using this regular expression, therefore, the language is a regular one. Now, just consider the language, the set of all strings of our a b, which contain odd number of A's. Now, it is easy to see that it can be written as a regular form x belong to a b star such that number of occurrence of a's in x is equal to twice n plus 1 for some n, but writing a regular expression for this language is little bit tricky. So, we will postpone it to a later point where we construct a regular grammar for the language. So, regular grammar is another representation finite representation for a language. So, even though it is tricky to write a regular expression, it is very easy to write a regular grammar or construct a regular grammar for the given language. So, regular grammar is a tool to generate exactly the reg class of regular languages. Then again consider the set of all strings over a b which contain odd number of a's and even number of b's. Again we can write this set in set below form as x equal to a b star such that numbers of a's in x equal to y n plus 1 that is odd for some n and numbers of b's in x equal to twice m for some m. Writing a regular expression for this language is more trickier than the previous example and we can use some other tool like say fine automata to construct this kind of or to accept this kind of languages. This again fine automata is yet again another tool to represent regular languages. Now, let us see the equivalence of regular expressions. We say that two regular expressions R 1 and R 2 
as equivalent if they represent the same language. And we denote it like R1 equivalent to R2. We use this symbol to represent the equivalence of two regular expressions. So, this means that L of R1 is equal to L of R2. Let us consider the regular expressions 1 0 plus 1 whole star and 1 0 star 1 star star. We can show that these two regular expressions are equivalent. From property 14, that we have already discussed regarding the property of languages is nothing but L 1 union L 2 star equal to L 1 star L 2 star whole star. So, this is a property 14 that we have already discussed for languages. So, if you consider property 14 then assuming L 1 to be 1 0 and L 2 to be 1, we get exactly 1 0 union 1 whole star to be equal to 1 0 star 1 star whole star. Now, since 1 0 and 1 represent the regular languages 1 0 singleton 1 0 and singleton 1 respectively, from the above equation we get that 1 0 plus 1 whole star is exactly equivalent to 1 0 star 1 star a whole star. So, you can use the properties of languages to show that the corresponding regular expressions are equivalent. That means, these properties holds good for all languages. Since, uh, uh, since those properties hold good for all languages, by specializing those properties to regular languages and in turn replacing by the corresponding regular expressions, we get the following identities for regular expressions. R epsilon is equivalent to epsilon r which is equivalent to r. That means, we have considered the property L 1 concatenation with epsilon is equivalent to or equal to epsilon concatenation with L 1 which is exactly L 1. So, if L 1 suppose r is a regular expression for L 1 and epsilon is a regular expression for a singleton epsilon, this is equivalent to singleton epsilon and the corresponding regular expression for L 1 is r, this is equivalent to r. So, this equivalence you have got from the properties of this language. Similarly, by replacing the language by regular expressions in the properties of languages, we get different kinds of equivalence for regular expressions. For example, say R 1 R 2 is not equivalent to R 1 R 2 R 1 in general. Similarly, R 1 concatenation R 2 R 3 not equivalent to or equivalent to R 2 R 1 R 2 concatenation R 3. R phi is equivalent to phi r which is equivalent to phi. Phi star is epsilon and so on. You can just reproduce these properties from the this equivalence of regular expression from the properties of languages. Just consider this identity of regular expression. We can use or prove this identity by using the equivalence of regular expressions. For example, say b plus a star b star plus epsilon b is equivalent to b plus a star b star plus b plus epsilon b which is equivalent to b plus a star b star b plus b star b. So, in this case simply this b plus we have 
concurrent with a star b star and concurrent with epsilon we have got this result. Similarly, this b is concurrent with this term and this term. Now, this can be written as b plus a star b plus hence this can be written as b plus a star b plus because b plus b a subset of b plus a star b plus. So, therefore, we have got the first one b plus a star b star plus epsilon b is equivalent to b plus a star b plus which have got. Similarly, one can observe that b b b star a star plus epsilon b plus can be equivalent to b star a star b plus. Similarly, we can show that these two regular expressions are equivalent by using the following step. So, in the first step, we have got from this expression, this equivalence ex expression. From this, we can use a regular expression properties to get eventually this expression. And finally, this can be written as 0 plus 1 0 now, if L is dependent by a regular expression R that is L r equal to R, then we may simply use R instead of L r to indicate the language. So, for given any language say L r, so R is a regular expression, we know that L r is the corresponding language dependent by R, but simply we can sometimes write R to dependent language itself. So this sort of notation for dependent language to for language dependent by a regular expression R. Now 